The field of neuroscience has been narrowing down to focus on just a few animal models. But the animal kingdom is so much bigger than just rats and mice and worms. This is neuroscience beyond the mouse. In season one, I'll guide you through some of the amazing sensory systems that other animals possess, including taste, touch, smell, and even some stuff that the human body can't detect. So I know the whole point of this YouTube series is to not just talk about rats and mice, but believe me when I tell you that the naked mole rat is more alien than either mole or rat. So, naked mole rats are rodents, belonging to the order Rodentia. And they do look a little bit like a spray dolly lab rat that some postdoc shaved as a prank. They look a little bit like an inside-out rubber Halloween mask. And they also look a little bit like a soggy, undercooked turkey bratwurst. Alright, so I'm not just making this series to dunk on these little animals, but they are really, really strange little mammals. For one, they can live to be 30 years old, which doesn't seem like much from our human-centric perspective. But take that three-decade lifespan and compare it with some of the other animals we often think about. A typical Sprague Dolly lab rat? You get like four years at best. Your family pet? You'd be surprised to hear if someone's dog lives to be 15 years old. 30 years is actually pretty close to the lifespan of a macaque monkey, which is one of the main primate models that gets used in neuroscience research. So with all that in context, it's pretty remarkable that these little bags of skin get to live as old as they do. They also have a very unexpected social structure. They are what zoologists call eusocial, meaning they live in a colony with many others like them. And at the very top rung of their social hierarchy is the queen naked mole rat, who functions just like the queen bee or a queen ant in these insect colonies. The queen naked mole rat basically runs a little harem of male naked mole rats, and any female naked mole rats that live under her domain basically just get bullied into sterility. She basically lives with an entire army of naked mole rats who just do all the work for her. They expand the colony, they dig the tunnels, they search their surroundings for food. It's just like an ant colony. Okay, a couple other weird things about naked mole rats. They're cold-blooded, just like snakes. And this is really unusual for mammals. They can also go for up to 20 minutes without oxygen. And both of these adaptations probably have something to do with their subterranean lifestyle. They live most of their lives in these tunnels underground. Another point of interest, naked mole rats are also remarkably resilient to cancer. But cancer biology aside, naked mole rats have one very, very interesting feature that intrigues many neuroscientists they have an extremely high tolerance to pain. And their relationship to pain is one of the elements that's discussed in this 2016 Cell Reports publication called Hypofunctional Track A Accounts for the Absence of Pain Sensitization in the African Naked Mole Rat. So pain has a very important role to play in the context of evolution. Pain is a warning signal, which tells our body that we're being injured in some way. Also, pain is a teaching signal, and it can tell us what types of things to avoid in the future to keep our bodies intact. In theory, animals that learned how to sense pain and how to avoid pain in the future had longer lifespans, which gave them more opportunities to pass on their genes. So some people are actually born with a condition called congenital insensitivity to pain, or CIP these people don't sense any pain at all. Some of them accidentally bite off the tip of their tongue while eating. Maybe they'll walk around for days with a broken back or on a twisted ankle. These people with CIP lead very challenging lives because they have to be constantly monitored for injuries. Some circus performers, like the so-called human pincushions, get recognized for their inability to sense pain. It's actually suggested that some of these people have CIP. In a really sad case of CIP, a boy who gained fame by walking across hot coals with knives in his arms recently died at 13 years old due to some injuries that he sustained after jumping off of a building. And this observation is common among people with CIP. They tend to have shorter life expectancies than others. Some of them have such serious injuries that they spend most of their adulthood in wheelchairs. 
And the tiniest little upside of CIP, despite all of these life-threatening injuries, is that it's actually possible to perform major surgeries like double amputations on people with CIP without anesthesia. Okay, but when it comes to those of us who can feel pain, we can detect all sorts of different kinds of pains, right? Having your finger crushed feels different from having your finger cut or burned or frozen. And despite all of those different sensations, they all share one thing in common the sensation of hyperalgesia after injury. Hyperalgesia is a temporary state by which we become a little bit more aware of an injured area. And this is probably some evolutionary holdover by which you try to protect an area that's already been injured so that it doesn't get injured anymore. Okay, now back to naked mole rats. This study looked at that phenomena of hyperalgesia in these animals. Spoilers, lack thereof. And before I get into the naked mole rat related details of this study, I just want to introduce some of the major players that are involved. Hyperalgesia happens when certain chemicals, namely inflammatory factors, get released at an area that gets injured. One of the main inflammatory factors that this study is going to address is called NGF, short for nerve growth factor. NGF is critical for a healthy pain response. In fact, there are some mutations associated with NGF that are also found in congenital insensitivity to pain. Now for NGF to have an influence on the sensory neuron, it has to interact with the receptor. And in the case of NGF, its main receptor is called TRAC-A. TRAC-A is a transmembrane receptor, which means it lives on the surface of the cell. In this case, it's found on the surface of the sensory neurons. And whenever NGF binds to TRAC-A, TRAC-A initiates a cascade of chemical signals inside the cell. In a way, it's like a row of molecular dominoes that have been knocked over once NGF binds to its receptor. And at the very end of those dominoes, the very end of that molecular cascade, is a different protein receptor called TRYP-V1. Now TRYP-V1 is something that many of us heat geeks know a little bit about. TRYP-V1 is activated in the human by a chemical called capsaicin. And this is that spicy compound you get in your jalapeno peppers. When you put too much hot sauce on your pizza, the capsaicin compound will bind to the TRYP-V1 receptor and it will send that signal into your brain that, ooh, this is hot. And it sends on that signal by changing the properties of those cells in your mouth. All right, now that we have this alphabet soup of NGF, TRAC-A, and TRYP-V1 all out of the way, let's get into the science. The researchers in this study used a series of electrophysiological methods in order to quantify just how strong that signaling cascade is. The amount of current passed gives us some idea about just how much the cells change in response to different stimuli. First off, they did some control experiments. They just used some ordinary mice as the control group. The population of cells they chose were those found in the DRG, or the dorsal root ganglion. These cells contain the cell bodies of the sensory neurons. It is well known that mice experience inflammatory pain. When you record what's happening to these cells after you dump on capsaicin and activate the TRYP-V1 receptors, you see the kind of current that is found in figure 1b. Now you can inflame these neurons by washing NGF all over those cells. And now when you dump capsaicin all over these inflamed cells, you see that there's a larger ionic current. Now this seems to be one of the main mechanisms that leads to the hyperalgesia. The injured tissue produces NGF, activates the TRAC-A receptors, which then increases the sensitivity of the TRYP-V1 receptors. And this is probably the reason why the mouse would cradle his little mousy paw if it was injured. Okay, now we repeat that experiment with the naked mole rats. Do the exact same thing. You isolate out the DRG, you do the electrophysiological recordings, you try to now dump on capsaicin to see how much current you get, and now this time when you throw the NGF all over the slice to theoretically inflame those cells, and then you add the capsaicin again, you get no increase in current. What this basically tells us is that there's something special about the naked mole rat DRG cells that makes them resilient to inflammatory pain. The big question now is why? They actually answer that question using a whole variety of really cool techniques. 
Oocytes from the African clawed frog Xenopus lavis, chromatography, mass spectrography, and the coolest one of all, chimeric receptors. These receptors are basically Frankenstein together proteins. You've got the outside part of the receptor that looks like the rat version, but the inside part of the receptor that looks like the naked mole rat version. And when they did this, they found that these receptors don't sensitize to capsaicin either. From all these experiments, you put it together, they basically have concluded that naked mole rats have a very interesting form of the track A receptor that basically makes it not so good at passing on inflammatory signals. So when NGF binds to those receptors, that signal gets passed on to the trip V1 receptors, but it doesn't influence them very much. And that's what makes these critters less sensitive to inflammatory pain. I should just mention that all of these molecules that we're talking about in the naked mole rat are also in people. So we definitely experience inflammatory pain as well. And, and the stuff that we learned from this study might help people with inflammatory pain that persists even though it doesn't help them. Okay, so I'm sure there's all kinds of weird little things that are interesting about these naked mole rats, but that's just one little taste of some of the things that neuroscientists might care about these animals for. Okay, thank you so much for joining me here today on Neuroscience Beyond the Mouse. I hope you learned something today, and I hope I've inspired you to keep learning more about our brains.